Hello, everyone. I'm here to present you off the electrical grid, plug into Cordova. This is a, this is a webinar that is uh, targeted at our systems developers who want to understand a bit better how to um, build native plugins. And on the other side, uh, native developers that already know Xcode and, and Android Studio and uh, want to know how to leverage that knowledge into our systems. So, first questions, taking taking the the their theory out of the way, why is Autisms uh, using Cordova? Well, <clears throat> there are a number of reasons, but some of those some of those are to adapt to different form factors. Uh, Autisms built for several devices, and uh, Cordova fits like a glove in this in this um, value added uh, proposition from the platform. Uh, the native shell deals with all the interactions with the device and offline data and logic out of the box. And there are almost 2,000 publicly available plugins that can enhance the experience of the device uh, beyond what the typical browser allows you to. Um, what is Cordova? Cordova <clears throat> allows you to build HTML, CSS, and JavaScript into a mobile app. Uh, into a, an hybrid application, and this fits like uh, like a glove into what uh, OutSystems uh, uh, produces as as the out, output of uh, the pages. Um, it targets multiple platforms with one code base. Uh, it's free and open source. That's why we use it. And there are a number of, of other reasons that they explain on their website: supports for offline scenario, reusable code across platforms. Uh, access to native device APIs, which is what we want to explore here. Let's go a bit into detail on how the Cordova application um, is, is built. So we have a layer um, or the mobile operating system which handles graphics, input sensors, services, everything uh, on the native side. And there are a couple of, a couple of APIs that uh, a Cordova application has. Uh, it has an API towards plugins. Cordova already offers a couple of plugins, or a couple of eight plugins uh, that are highlighted here, and a number of custom plugins, like I said. Um, these plugins have APIs towards the, the web view. You can think of the web view as a web browser, and the OutSystems platform generates code specific for this web view and leverages these Cordova APIs to, to, uh, through this, this web view using JavaScript. Let's see how OutSystems plug into this picture. So first of all, client-side actions are JavaScript nodes running on the web view. Uh, basically, this is your typical OutSystems application. You could have a list append here, but you could also have a plugin. Um, the, the JavaScript bri bridge is implemented in, in the native plugin uh, eSpace uh, or module. Um, through a series of JavaScript nodes that tap into the native code for iOS and Android, which is encapsulated in the core of a plugin. And this is the native part where you, where you have to, to do Objective C or Java. So, <clears throat> what components, uh, can I use off the shelf? What is there available for, for me without having to code anything? So you have all the supported plugins, uh, plugins which have, uh, which are uh, uh, cared for by our systems. Most of these are available for testing directly on our systems now. Uh, so the ones you see highlighted, you can use your, in your application and test them right away in our systems now. And there's a number of community effort driven plugins. So all these plugins that our community is delivering and uh, not supported by our systems, but supported by our uh, our lovely, loving community. So, using an out systems plugin, let's let's look at the first level of uh, of plugin uh, development. So, plugins are available on the Forge, like I said, both supported and unsupported. Either you use one of the supported plugins and the out systems now shell, and you're ready to go, like the camera, barcodes, etc. Or you can use a plugin from the Forge 
and generate your customized native shell. This is a very important step. You cannot just uh, reference the plugin and use it, use it right away um, uh, without generating the shell, especially if you have already generated the shell before you reference the plugin. So how do I use them? Reference it, check for plugin availability on the shell. This is important to see if you are running on a shell which doesn't have that plugin installed and use it. So let's look at a small demo of, uh, of, um, of this uh, capability in action. Uh, I have it pretty prepared. <laughs> Don't expect a lot of code here. Um, so basically what we are going to show is how to, um, to link this uh, camera icon with an action to take a picture. Uh, basically uh, you have an action here on the link the, um, the camera plugin offers you two uh, actions. The check camera plugin as its uh, best practice for plugins and the take picture. The take picture just returns the binary of the captured image and the check plugin returns an is available and a specific error code structure. So what you need to do is check for plugin availability. If you are running on the browser or if you are running on I don't know, how systems now know because it has the camera plugin, but on a shell that doesn't have the camera plugin, then it will give you an error saying the camera plugin is not available. Um, next step, you take a picture using the, the action like you would uh, any action on, uh, on the logic tab. If it is success, then you assign the binary to a local picture that I have here. This local picture is just a, um, a local storage entity which is being used in this action, which is a synchronization action to create or update local pictures. You need to trust me on this. I'm going in and going up. And then refresh local pictures to make sure that the pictures, the, the new picture appears on, on this list we can see here. So we have the list and the picture is somewhere here inside, okay? So let's take a look at this in action. So this is uh, the application running. We have some pictures I've already uh, been taking. I'm taking a picture of my wonderful view here. And that's it. That's, that's probably the shortest demo in history. Let's go back to our presentation and take a look at the next step of uh, plugin development. So first, did I tell you already that we have a wide community of native developers using and sharing their plugins? Um, currently, Cordova has on its website, or at least when I put up these slides, 1,980 plugins or 1,980 plugins. Um, that's, that's a lot of plugins and we need to leverage it. So how do we develop a new plugin in our systems? We are at this layer here, native plugin. So as I said, plugins are usually available on GitHub. Uh, look for complete plugins. Uh, plugins for which the JavaScript API is well defined, um, support, check if the, the plugin has support for your target device. Some plugins are built supporting iOS, some are built using uh, Android. Usually plugins that need manual steps are often harder to integrate. They are not impossible, but they are harder. They need some hook automation. Uh, we will go into that uh, later. And a plugin needs to be supported by the OutSystem shell core of a version in order to work. Fetching the plugin source code. So in order to include the plugin in, uh, in a module, an OutSystems module, you have three ways to reference it. You either use the URL to, plug to a specific plugin uh, repository, uh, usually on GitHub. Um, you can use the identifier that's published on Cordova. Uh, you can also uh, mention something like Cordova battery plugin and it goes there. 
uh, or you can use it uh, using you can reference it using resources. So you include a resource file uh, in this definition, and you include the path to the plugin inside this resource file, which is basically a zip file. This um, this little JSON here uh, will go into the definitions of the of the out systems module, and when generating the shell, the the out systems will know to fetch these resources and include them in the project that is used to generate the shell. Some plugins use variables, and this is where you can set the variables for the plugins. Basically, these variables are um, definitions like uh, API keys or something like that, that needs to go inside the project when it's generating the shell, so as it, uh, so as it becomes embedded in, in the shell itself. So how do I include it in my application? Well, there is this extensibility, extensibility configuration on the on the module definitions, and you just set the, the URL here on the on the plugin structure. Okay, usually the page uh, uh, that you are referencing to have has the GitHub URL to to fetch the plugin from. How do I use it? Uh, a good plugin has uh, good uh, documentation. So in this example, navigation notification alert, you have uh, a definition on how to use the plugin in terms of uh, JavaScript. So you just need to copy this code into our systems uh, JavaScript nodes, and you're almost good to go. So how do I use a plugin? First, you import the plugin code in extensibility settings. You pick up the JavaScript code from the plugin, you add to JavaScript nodes, and you use it. Okay, not so fast. Um, the plugins sometimes have events. Events um, are registered using event listeners, and the plugin needs to communicate with the without systems uh, in an asynchronous manner. That's what we're seeing here in the battery status plugin. This battery status red registers at a battery status uh, uh, event, and there's a callback for treating the level and if it's plugged or not. Um, so, to in order to to trap these events, we need to use a, a block that we drag onto each page that needs uh, the functionality of uh, tracking battery status, and the responsibility of this plugin will be to uh, bubble up the JavaScript event into an out systems event using p events event uh, like you see depicted in this picture. So the plugin event, the, pl the battery plugin, when it has a change in battery uh, status uh, or level, or uh, if it's plugged in or not, it triggers an out systems event, and that event will be bound to a screen callback, which is what events in P10 do. You bind the, 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 the event to a screen action. This all goes well if the page is static, but what about lifecycle events? What about if you are transitioning a page? Um, and when transitioning a page, you need to be aware that at a given moment in time, there are two pages which are active in, 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 the, in your browser. And if the battery status event occurs before the transition, we're fine. If it occurs after the transition, we're fine. But what happens when it occurs in the middle of the transition? Well, then we have a problem and we have a solution. So I'd like you to introduce your new friend, Template Plugin. This, um, this Template Plugin is, is an, a Forge component that allows you to uh, quickly build up on, on, uh, on a plugin and not having to care about this. Basically, this, this template plugin has the sole purpose of it, and to be, besides having some template actions for you, is to actually map if the screen is ready or not, and to uh, bubble up the events either to the old screen callback or to the new screen callback. So you don't have to worry whether the status of the battery comes to the new screen or the old screen. Let's see how this is used in more detail. Basically, when you need to register a screen callback, like this trigger my event, you have on the onReady, you have a set of JavaScript that you need to uh, configure in order to define these callbacks. 
these callbacks basically you need to wrap the the callback or the screen callback you want to to uh, call trigger my event which is this one and and wrap it around the new callback this new callback is what uh, makes you makes the screen aware or makes the plugin aware of which screen to receive this callback uh, on on uh, on your application uh, this callback is stored on a, on a special variable car called scope. We'll see in more detail afterwards. Um, the scope is destroyed with every page uh, navigation. So basically on, on destroy, you needn't do anything because the scope will be destroyed. The scope for the active page or the old page will be destroyed and these variables will, will go away. However, on event listeners, uh, the, the case is a bit different. Although you define the, the action much the same way, you call back and you store it on the on a variable called my listener, you register the my listener into a document. And this document, since we are working on a single page environment, this document is not disposed when the, the page navigates. So you need to remove the event listener on this thread. Okay? This is what defines a plugin um, on a on a on a block. It is important to unregister the event listener because when you navigate between between pages, all the, the event listeners will be attached and there will be a lot of calls on the on the stack. Uh, so eventually you'll run out of memory. Unregistering event listeners, because we defined any everything on the onready, and this module destroy scope is what's called the onDestroy that was defined previously. This looks empty because you don't have to do much anything. The only thing you need to do is to change the name of the of the plugin here on the destroy scope so that it knows which plugin it's destroying the scope for. Another useful uh, characteristic of this um, template plugin is that you can use inside uh, external uh, scripts, so scripts that are not living in the in the pages uh, in the screens that you are defining. You can also get access to the callbacks directly from the scripts. So if you reference the, the scope, like you see here, this scope will hold all the variables, which you can also define, uh, but also the callbacks that you need to call on your screen. So if there is something happening on the plugin and you have the script defined outside, this is the way to get back into a specific page that might be using that plugin at the moment. The plugin also, uh, the template plugin also offers uh, some helper functions, namely the check plugin, which is uh, best practice for plugins to define uh, the the uh, the layout of the of the, the the action that tests if the plugin is available to be used on the shell or not. Okay. Also, the template plugin action is the action that you need. I knew I would do this. Is the action that you knew that uh, you need to. Um, use in order to um, to define further actions on on the plugin uh, and the code is already there you just you just have to change the the, the node and add uh, complex uh, data structure conversion if necessary so how to use the plugins uh, import the plugin code the core of a plugin code in extensibility settings like I explained pick up the Java code from the plugin Add to JavaScript nodes, write JavaScript to register and unregister the plugin events, and write JavaScript to check plugin availability on the shell. Now, because this registering and registering of plugin events might seem a bit uh, confusing, I'm going to demo the building of such a plugin. Uh, once again, don't worry, I'm not going without a safety net. I already have it pre-baked. But I'm going to actually build the plugin um, like I would the first time. So I'm defining a mobile application. This is the template plugin uh, that I'm going to use in order to get all the, the treats that I explained. Battery plugin two. There's a one and it's working. Creating the module. And like I promised, there is a lot of things already defined here. So first thing you need to do, uh, let's get to the, let's first get to the, 
web page that defines the, the plugin that we are consuming. Let me quickly show you. So this is the GitHub page for the Cordova plugin battery status. And basically the usage example, it's this. So we have an event listener and on battery status, it uh, reports the status level and if it's plugged or not. So let's get back to that when we need. We need to first define the extensibility configuration. So in order to define the extensibility configuration, we need to get this URL here. And we don't need variables for this plugin. Okay, so we have the extensibility configuration defined. Now our systems will know where to get the, the, the plugin from. Now we need to use it, right? So uh, I'm not uh, going to use an action, but uh, let's first go into the check template plugin. Plugin is loaded. Uh, the plugin is loaded is uh, actually quite simple. We need to test for Hold on. It's not here, sorry. We need to test for availability of the plugin. And this is done by this is done by testing the, the the node that uh, the the JavaScript node that uh, holds the battery status object, um, it should be something like this. And then on the block, which is the most important part. So looking at the codes that we see here, we have a level and an if plug. I'll just use the time to copy this so that we can use it. Um, so on ready first, uh, registering the plugin. There's a lot of um, uh, comments here that will help you get started. I need to consume this, right? So on battery status, this is a callback that I want to bubble up. So I'll create this callback here. Trigger on battery status. And this callback will receive a level, which is, which is an integer and it will receive an is plug, which is a boolean, right? So this is the callback. We don't need this one. I'm adding the event listener here. Uh, okay, I, I do need this one because, oh no, I don't need. Uh, I will use this uh, new callback action to define the plugin. And here is where I place the action that I want to trigger. So like this. Of course, you are not calling the callback. You are just passing the callback reference. So you don't need the parentheses to call it. And this new call, the scope my callback is what we pass on here in order to register the event listener. On the other hand, like I said, we need to unregister the listener as well. So basically it's almost the same. You just need to remove this extra parameter and add the remove event listener here. Okay. The other thing we needed to do is to change the name of the plugin here and on the on destroy as well, on the unregistering as well to destroy the correct plugin. Okay. So this is the definition of a plugin. We base, ah, no, there's another thing. Triggering the on battery status, we still need to add an event to declare, to declare the, uh, the event uh, that will be bubbled up, up to your, to your page. The only thing this trigger on battery status does is calling this event and passing on the variable that it receives from uh, the on-ready JavaScript node. 
if you remember, so looking at it again, so that we can look, we can confirm this callback that is defined here, we'll call this trigger on battery status. It receives two uh, parameters, level and is plugged. And when the event of battery status is, is triggered, it will call this trigger, they will bubble up this event. And let's look then at the small demo that I have prepared for this. So basically I have taken a picture before and, uh, oh no, I need to, to do something first. Obviously you need to know how, how this was used. Um, so I'm using this battery plugin here on this uh, little block called battery level. Uh, the, pl the plugin is defined here where you define the handler for the event that we defined previously. This handler just passes in the, the, the uh, attributes that uh, were defined and the handler will do two things. We'll copy the level and is plugged into the local variables uh, of the block. And if we are plugged, it will trigger uh, the offline sync in order to start uh, synchronizing the images that I, the pictures that I've taken. Uh, this battery level also has some interesting things that I've, uh, that I've included. For instance, the background color changes uh, with the level. If we are under 15%, uh, it's red. If we are under 50, it's orange. The else is green. Also, the text changes a bit, and this is the part that we will be able to see. If the level is at, uh, it, it, it represents the level in a percentage, and if it's plugged, it will say that it's charging, okay? So now we are ready to go to our little demo. I've taken a picture before here, and I will delete this coffee machine. Uh, and when I plug in, it will say charging. It will start syncing. It will remove the images that are not necessary and upload the ones that were created. So this is a small example of how um, this, uh, this plugin can be used. And I hope you use it all the time because it's very useful for battery draining operations um, like synchronization. Going back to our presentation, we have uh, some examples here. For instance, Baked Beacons plugin. This one also does the same thing. Um, there is a block that is responsible for uh, capturing events that the beacon sends, like entering or exiting a region. Um, we can see here that uh, the scope is being enriched with the enter region callback and the exit region callback. You can see that there is complex data going in and out. Um, using JSON, we can stringify the notification data and events, and we can uh, make complex data <clears throat> be processed correctly. <clears throat> As you can see below, after we defined the, the callbacks, we are adding event listeners for entering and exiting of beacons and and then there is some uh, initialization initialization logic that triggers the event if there is a pending beacon event uh, somewhere there the on destroy also does what we uh, expected it to uh, we remove the event listeners so that uh, with navigation between pages we are sure that uh, the event listeners are cleaned up there's also some uh, basic housekeeping here in terms of variables that uh, are, are sorry. Um, <clears throat> the enter region, if you are curious about how to process complex information, we have the serial, the serialization of objects here. Um, so when the, the beacon um, sends in a, an enter region, it sends a string. We deserialize it and we pass it above uh, we bubble up the event uh, using a structure that is well known and is well processed within our systems. All right, so now let's go into the nitty gritty. Um, native plugin development. We are at the final level of um, plugin development, so we are talking about the native code, the bridge between uh, the native code and the JavaScript API. 
Basically, the score of a plugin can be represented as a simple folder structure. It has a source folder where source files are kept, uh, Java files for Android, uh, .h and .m files for iOS. We have a www folder where the JavaScript that uh, is bridging the, the native uh, to JavaScript calls is, is played, and the plugin XML where everything is configured in terms of uh, project uh, project definition. Now, this sort of a plugin lives as its own, but when it's instantiated into iOS or Android to be compiled, it lives inside a project, a larger project for Android and a larger project for Xcode. So there are a number of actions you can do with plugin XML that help you define the project uh, where the plugin is going to be placed. For instance, um, I'm going through most of the definitions of the plugin XML. So the JS module uh, defines JavaScript modules on the plugin. In this case, we are referring to this uh, Google Plus JS. This is, by the way, Google Plus uh, plugin um, that is on the Forge. Uh, the clobbers basically define where the JavaScript API for the plugin will be placed inside the DOM of the web page you are working on. So in this instance, uh, Window Plugins Google Plus is where uh, this Google Plus JS will have its instance. Frameworks is the way we have to include platform or third party, when I mean platform is iOS or Android, or third party libraries. On this in, in this instance, um, Android uh, Google Plus uh, plugin will require these two Android uh, frameworks. This is just the notation for a Gradle uh, dependency. You could also have a, a hard coded uh, um, folder structure for files inside your plugin, but this will work because sort of a, a our system uses Gradle to, to generate the, the, the plugins and it will fetch this play services off and play services identity inside the, 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 the Android project when we are building it. On iOS, the same thing. We are referring to a set of Google APIs to enable Google Plus authentication and a set of system frameworks that are defined here. We also have the config file. Config file is the, is the way we have to actually uh, bear with it a little bit more. This is just the complicated stuff. Uh, but it's almost done. Config file is where we can define or change uh, things inside configuration files. For instance, config XML is the default for all uh, of a project. Android manifest is, is a configuration file that is uh, available on all Android uh, uh, files, on, on all Android projects. Um, config XML is what defines, for instance, that this Google Plus um, class is defined in this package and it's going to run when it's loaded. And this feature here is what uh, is the name of it. Access Origin is just defining whitelisting for, for callbacks or uh, calling uh, accounts.google.com. In this instance here, coughing file is being used to change something in the Android manifest in this path. And we are including two permissions here. Also, we have source files. Source files are used to refer to specific uh, Java files or, or other files. And basically, they just copy files onto specific folder structures. Google Plus, for instance, has this, tar has this package name. Uh, when it's inside the project, it needs to, it needs to live inside NL like service plugins so that Java uh, can, can compile it. This is just something to copy source files to the right uh, directories. Uh, the iOS example is much the same. The only difference as we see here is that besides the source file, there's also a header file. And uh, there's a new thing here, which is uh, preference. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to this. Preference is the way we have to um, open up some variables like I uh, explained before uh, that some plugins needed um, so that they are 
included in the build process and uh, and defined uh, and uh, configured in the project that is going to build the shell. Um, this specific uh, uh, structure you see here, array and dictionary, this is just because PLIS um, have these specific uh, structures. But in this instance, we are using config file to change the PLIST on this uh, specific node and including this specific touch, namely the, sorry, namely the preference that we uh, opened up here. Uh, last example, the, the hooks. Um, so basically, uh, Cordova uh, projects <clears throat> uh, run on, um, on Node.js and uh, these are uh, Node.js JavaScript that allow you to uh, further configure the project doing manual steps on the project that you cannot do otherwise. Some helpful hooks are before plugin installed and after, after plugin install, or before build and after build. Um, and yeah, okay, so now we are going to uh, show you a little demo of how to build this native plugin. But before we start, uh, I need to explain how to actually set up the environment in order to do that. So first thing you need to install Node.js. Um, this is uh, necessary in order to run this next uh, line, which is uh, to install Plugman from the command line. This is one way to do things. This, uh, this NPM install Plugman will create the structure that I've shown you before uh, out of the box and uh, will allow you to have commands to include uh, platforms. If you have this, if you have this core of a project and you want to test it outside our system, so in a standalone project consuming your core of a plugin, you may want to try core of a CLI uh, that can be used inside Android Studio or Xcode. And this will uh, allow you to build a specific project for your um, uh, for your distribution uh, uh, tool and uh, and test it in a standalone environment outside the, the, the out system shell. But I'm stopping here. This is as low as I'm going to get because from here on it's uh, pure native code uh, that is the responsibility of nat native developer. Let's see how we uh, build it from scratch then. First, you use Blue Plugman to generate the core of a structure and add native modules. Then you build the native code for the native module. This is where you type all the things that you need to type to code the module. Configure the plot for Cordova plugin settings on plugin XML, like we've seen in the details before. Build the out systems wrapper. And finally, use it. Okay, let's get to it. So first things first, I have hmm, I have these command prompts to uh, start creating my plugin. First, we use Plugman to create the plugin. Basically, this just creates a plugin with this name. Uh, the plugin ID is what you get when you when you install this uh, when you refer to a plugin on Cordova. Uh, you can use the ID instead of the full URL and a version. This version will go into the XML file as we'll see briefly. So I'm creating the plugin. This has created this new struct, this new folder here. This folder has a structure that uh, that we mentioned previously. Let me just show you here. So it has the plugin XML, uh, www folder. This folder has the JavaScript and it has a source file which is empty. It's empty because we needed to add the platform. So let's add the plugin at platform at Android. And I want this to have an effect. And when we create the Android platform, it will create a structure for Android. And the same thing for iOS. And it creates the iOS versions. So let's take a look at these files. Let's make this human readable. So, as I mentioned, the version is here. Um, this is the name of the plugin. 
It has the clobber for the target where we have the plugin. I will need this later. This is the JavaScript file that was created. And then we have the, the different configurations for Android and iOS. These, these statements I've put here, this is what has created the plugin for me in the first place. So looking at the JavaScript file, it has a cool method, cool. Uh, this is the standard for this, uh, for this uh, uh, plugin. And let's look at the source files for Android. Okay, uh, let me just quickly change this. Uh, I don't want it to just return message. I want it to return plugin echoes with message. Okay, my plugin is changed. Let's look at iOS. <clears throat> now this is where I'm, I get really lost. That's why I have my 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 little sketchbook here. So this echo is what is in return here, apparently. Let me just copy this. And it lost its format, but this echo now is being uh, pulled out as a result. So plugin echoes with echo, and this is the result that is returned. So basically, I've changed the plugin both in Android and iOS in order to uh, attach something before something that arrives at the plugin. Um, so this is it. Okay, let's start integrating this into app systems. So, like we mentioned here. We need to configure uh, to build a wrapper. Building the wrapper is quite easy. First, you zip the plugin, and now you get into our systems. Let's uh, let's do this plugin again. So I'm starting again with the template. This one will be easier because it won't have events. It is a simple uh, call. Creating the plugin. Two, there should be a first. Okay, creating the module. So, first thing, extensibility, right? We have the zip file, so let's include the zip file from, uh, from this folder. We have it on resources. Now let's reference that resource. This is not what I want. What I want is something like this. So plugin is using a resource. Uh, the resource um, has a path for my first plugin. I think this is what I guess. And uh, it comes, it fetches the, the, the plugin is fetched from this zip file, which has this folder for the plugin. This is what we need to reference our, our first plugin. And now let's define uh, the logic. First, we don't need this, we don't need events. So we can remove this. Check the play plugin, like I mentioned previously. Uh, the JavaScript, mm, you know, the plugin has a clobber for this. So this is where we test if the plugin is available or not. We just double negate the, 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 the object to make sure that it's there. It's undefined, it's uh, false. Um, so the check template plugin is done. The template plugin action is also very easy. So what this plugin does, it has an input message. So message in, it has an output message message out. Uh, the template JavaScript nodes also should have those parameters. So message in and message out. So this is not what we want. We want to call we want to call this my first plugin and there's a cool method, right? Cool method. I was mixing both things. 
And these cool method receives an argument and then success an error like usual. So let's say message success file. This is not message, this is actually what we need to input. So messaging goes here and success message out receives a message that arrives in this callback. Okay. So this is the definition of the plugin. We just need to bind these variables. Messaging goes into the JavaScript node. Message out comes from the JavaScript node. And there you have it. Okay. Obviously, I already have this pre-baked plugin. And I already have it working. So let's move, let's look at uh, the demo. Basically, I have this custom plugin. Oh, we need to once again show you the code that's behind it. So my first custom plugin, we've already referenced the plugin here, my first plugin, dry run. So there's this action, message input, message outputs. Check my first plugin. This is not the plugin I built. This is one that is already built. Uh, you don't call me a uh, teacher. <laughs> and then do it on click. This is where um, this uh, action will be clicked with this input message that is uh, refer referring to this variable. So on click, what we will do, we will check the, the, the plugin availability. If it's not available, it sends it's not available. If it is available, then we call the plugin action with this in message. Uh, we clean this in message so that the field is cleared up when we when we type in something and send it to the plugin. And we append it to a list of echoes. And this list of echoes is then represented here. This list group, which has a lot of expressions, and it's just typing in the expression that it's there. So going to the demo, I type in something. Yeah, it worked, it echoes. And this is how you build a native plugin from bottom to top. We have some reference material here that I, that I used to to uh, build this webinar, and I hope you found found this interesting.